and welcome to the podcast, the broadcast, the broadcast. Boys and girls, welcome to Convincing Idiots. I'm idiot one, Dean. I'm idiot number two, Nick. And I'm idiot three, Brian. I mean, it might be unfair to, to give us n- numbers and come to think of it, but <laughs> regardless, because I, I clearly am not number one. It's I mean, always good to know where you stand with things, you know. What, what, that's true. Well, you're always the top idiot in our hearts, Dean. Aw, <laughs> well, hey. I mean, it's actually probably a really good idea, you know, that that I've given us numbers, because that's what we're doing here today. Um, our list today is the, the brackets, the superhero brackets. This is going to be a quick uh, podcast, not exactly, you know, one long one. So we're going to do these quick broad uh, podcasts um, every week. Uh, going through the brackets of our superhero brackets that we're, we're putting together. Um, Nick, why don't yes, you uh, and take the next step there? Yeah, absolutely. So we announced that we were going to do these superhero brackets. Uh, we announced on our last show uh, the 20 that we selected. Um, being the brilliant minds that we are, uh, we didn't think about how on each side, when you have, you have 20 superheroes, right? 10 over here and 10 over here. Uh, when it breaks down, there's going to be five winners for each round, which leaves us with an uneven amount of heroes. So we're going to have to add four more at some point. We're still going to go on today with... Uh, You're an idiot. We, we discuss, I know. I really am, yeah. God. If only I had, like, a people around to me to, like, bring this up when I first... When we were talking about 20 heroes. It's almost like... I don't know. I just... I wish there was someone there to kind of steer me in the right direction. I tried to tell him. I said I, I, I gave him, laid out the math for him, and Nick just slapped me across the face and told me to, uh, to know my role. And you know, and this is what this is what happens. What happens yes. when you listen to things I say? Don't do that. <laughs> um, so basically, uh, we'll be adding four more heroes in this bracket to make it even, so we have an official bracket. So uh, it'll end up being 24 altogether. Um, but for now, today we are discussing uh, the first matchup of our bracket which is uh, Marvel's Iron Man, who everyone I'm sure is very familiar with. Also, very popular of DC Universe, Wonder Woman. So these two will be battling today, and the three of us will kind of hash it out, see uh, what kind of, you know, maybe Brian the Statman can give us some of each of their powers, a little background on each character, and then we'll just kind of discuss, you know, what kind of tactics each of these characters would use to their benefit. And ultimately, uh, there's three of us, which is nice, so uh, most... Both two out of three to the winner. That'll be our winner. Very good. So Nick, I mean, you we just you just put these into a, a an online randomizer. So yeah, that's how we got all these the, two. Yeah, the twenty names and the randomizer didn't catch that it would be uneven either. So, <laughs> but we yeah, threw them all in there and it threw them all in a random order. So that's the that's what we came out with. Iron Man, Wonder Woman. I think is a pretty solid first round, boys. That's uh, both. I mean, pretty heavy hitters, but both in very different ways. So. Uh, Brian, would you care to elaborate on the uh, superpowers and backgrounds of Wonder Woman and Iron Man? Yeah, real quick. So Wonder Woman uh, was founded in 1941. Her first appearance was in All-Star Comics number eight. So uh, she was one of these heroes that uh, during World War II, she was created to help fight the uh, Axis powers back then. You know, like Wonder Woman, you had Captain America and some other very popular heroes that are still very popular today. Uh, she is an Amazon princess. Uh, she, they've kind of changed her backstory a little bit. So, you know, DC has kind of rebooted itself a couple of times over the years. So they've kind of changed her story arc a little bit to, she's a demigod. It was not part of her original, uh, storyline, but uh, she is the daughter of Zeus. So obviously a a very powerful, uh, one of the most, you know, the most powerful God, I guess, in, in, in history, her abilities. I mean, she, you know, a lot of you are very familiar with Wonder Woman. I mean, she's uh, superhuman uh, strength. She can fly. She's very intelligent. Uh, she has uh, high endurance and agility. Uh, she can fight well. Uh, she has some invulnerability. Uh, she's got for, uh, for uh, bracelets. We're all familiar with those. They're indestructible, so she can use those with her reflexes to deflect bullets and other uh, projectiles flying at her. She has her lasso of truth, which is also very difficult to get out of. And, of course, it does force you to tell the truth. It's a good thing that uh, it's never been lassoed to on Dean, honestly. 
Right. Yeah. <laughs> I don't nope. want to know that for anybody. Uh, yeah. She has uh, a, a sword. Her tiara is uh, she can throw it as a, as a weapon as well. She has a shield and we know about her invisible jet, which is one of the strangest uh, <laughs> things, I think, in comic book history. I don't understand the the logic of the invisible jet. I've got jet. some questions about it. First of all, um, the jet, the invisible jet. Now, the the bathroom in the invisible jet, is that also, the, are the walls also invisible? You would think, yes, if you if you use a latrine in the invisible jet, would you see you, the person <laughs> in the, probably. yes, that is a good question. Yeah, because she's visible from the outside, right? Right. Well, it's just the jet that you can't cartoon, see. So she's, yeah. she's like sitting down, like in a chair, yeah. but flying through the air, like kind of thing. Right. Yeah, you just have I mean, to plan. Just, Go ahead. You guys, is that a bird? Is like, no, it's a woman crouching down, pooping in the air. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I like the laugh track we have. Right? Yeah, it's a good one. Yeah, I'm, yeah that's I'm good. I like it. Yeah, that's good. I like it. It almost sounds like a young child. Huh? <laughs> well, I, it's a at least I, I need some. Yeah, I think uh, that's our your main demographic is mostly children. <laughs> right. Yeah. yeah, that's good. Yes, of course. Hot. That's who we. That's 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 we're all about the kids. Is what we are. <laughs> anyway, so she uh, she heals quickly and all that stuff. Now, Wonder Woman is a mortal so she is a demigod demigod so she's half human half god so all the things that would harm a human she is it would harm her as well so bullets poison gas uh she ages like anybody else maybe a little bit slower i got a question uh, on you. Is this uh, slower like this new movie coming out 1980 the 1984 correct i mean the original movie was set in like the 40s 50s right or and now, of course, she looks. Yeah, I think they're doing some liberties with the storyline in the in the movies. Well, obviously the comics do. I mean, she, you know, it's anyway. You okay? You get it. Now, Iron Man. <laughs> I don't. That's why I asked. <laughs> yeah, you understand. Well, like the, who ages in the comics, really? Anyways, right? So okay. All I'm asking is, does she age? Does she in fact age slower? That is a good question. I don't. They've not said that. So we'll figure, not said that she we'll ages slower necessarily. So they, I, we assume that a little bit since she's a demigod, she probably does age slower okay. because she's half god, but she does age and will eventually perish. Okay, you know? gotcha. Uh, Iron Man. His first appearance was in Tales of Suspense number thirty-nine in nineteen sixty-three. And Iron Man 1 was in 1968. Uh, a lot of us know Iron Man very well from the Marvel movies. He has genius-level intellect. He's a proficient scientist and engineer. So in the comics, his intellect is on par with uh, David Banner and Reed Richards and some of the geniuses of the Marvel Universe. Tony Stark is right up there. Obviously, the suit. So he his suit's... Uh, Give him superhuman strength and speed and abilities and reflexes. He's got the uh, he can fly, of course. He could he can reach supersonic speeds and flight. He's got his repulsor rays on his hands. We know mm -hmm. that. Uh, he's got different types of uh, armor as well. So he's made armor to fight the Hulk, for instance. And he's got a freeze beam. He can make holograms of himself. That'd be important. Uh, Go ahead. I said that'd be important. Yeah, yes. you can duplicate yourself and, and trick people that way. So that's, that's right. Good. Uh, <laughs> he's, he's got again. He's got different types of armor. That's a big one. And his uh, greatest weaknesses. I mean, he's you know we know Tony Stark in the movies is similar to the comics. I mean, he has a big a can ego. Opener. Huh? A can opener. That might he could be he could be yes it could harm him with a can opener. That's right. Uh, his, you know, he's, he's he, underneath the armor. He's just a regular guy. So he's just a smart guy. He can fight, fight a little bit, but without his armor, he'd be very easy to uh, defeat by with any, uh, one with hu superhuman strength or whatever. Uh, we know that he has a, uh, uh, uh he likes the, his women, right? So in the comics, he's been more of a, you know, playboy and all that stuff. Uh, and he, again, he's, he needs to recharge. His armor only runs so long, and eventually he needs to recharge. So that's just a couple of, uh, you know, points yeah. about those heroes. Yeah, that's something that I could perceive being a problem for Tony there is the, uh, 
I mean, I, I think uh, Wonder Woman across every every different way she's ever been portrayed, whether it be in comics or in movies, she's always been quite attractive. So that that might be uh, pose an yes. interesting. Uh, she might be able to work that to her advantage, or it might be a, a you know something something Tony might have to overcome there. <laughs> okay. Right. So now we've talked about a couple scenarios. Go ahead, Dean. Well, my question for once we we're now going to get into the uh, the fight. Yeah. Now. What are we basing our argument right now? Is is are we arguing that they're Mortal Kombat like fighting? You know who's going to win in a battle fight? Are we do we take into consideration the the outside uh, stuff like uh, movies? You know their popularity, or, or is it just a character character based fight? And is it to the death? Do does the other character have to die to to no. do? No, we're not doing to the death. And, okay. and we're not doing like it's not a battle as far as like popularity and everything okay. else. No, this is these so are two combat style combat fight. style. Right. For for some reason they're fighting each other. Okay. Right? Okay. Uh, and then yeah, we and we talked a little bit off camera. This was an interesting one because it's a couple different scenarios. One is, uh, and actually this could probably you know this for other battles as well. One is. The two characters are somewhere, they meet, and they fight. So whatever they have on them at their disposal, that's it. The yeah, other one is... Yeah, yeah imp impromptu, or like a, it's, it's just a sudden thing. It's not, nothing so, right. that anyone planned not for. Not they all go to. It's he walks by, bumps his shoulder, and says, dude, what's up? That That right. is one scenario. That's right. Okay. And, and the, another one is they do know ahead of time, I have to fight this other character that mindset changes this greatly oh yeah. i i think that scenario helps tony stark because oh, he yeah, has more time, time to plan and because i mean let's let's just get down to brass tacks here she is she is powerful herself right, right. as a standard yes. woman she has superpowers as to where iron man is a regular dude now granted he's super intelligent and has all this money and technology at his disposable. But if he was able to plan for something like that, that would definitely benefit him. See, so let's my, talk about the... Go ahead, Dean. In my mind, it, it we all remember the critically uh, acclaimed and amazing movie Mortal Kombat. Was it 1993 or something like that? Yeah. Um, yeah. That's my picture in my head. Like, they're all showing up to this island for this superhero tournament. Yeah. So, so they so they have time to prepare. You know, they have they put their best gear on. They put their best lasso on. Now, would it be a bubble? Would they have to quarantine upon entering the island? Of course, absolutely. Like, <laughs> you know, mask coming in and out yeah. of the island. Yes, yes. That's Attention, right. must wear your super mask to join the uh, tournament. Yeah. Okay, so let's let's talk about that for a second. Do we want to discuss both scenarios, or is or is that our mindset right there? In no, this is a tournament. Like Marvel did that was sort of they had like a Secret Wars thing, which was actually pretty cool. So that was a, a super villain brought all the heroes together on a planet, and they they knew and villains, and they knew they had to fight each other. Yeah, I like that. Yeah. So that's the mindset. So you're saying in this scenario, in this universe, Tony Stark would know ahead of time. Yeah. I know I have to go fight Wonder Woman, so yeah. give him the opportunity to do some. Recon and build yep. armor mm -hmm. specifically because he built armor specifically to fight the Hulk. Sure. Right. So in this scenario, he could create armor or enhancements to his armor to give him an advantage on Wonder Woman. Is that where we're going here? I, I'd like to think so. I would say I, mean, yeah, let's, I don't let's let's throw out all the great. stops. Yeah, pull out all Go the ahead. stops. I mean, okay. let's let them be their best selves, right? I mean, if Tony right. Stark wanted to, he's not a superhero. But if one of his uh, advantages is that he's very smart and has all this, you know, technology and stuff, I mean, use it to the maximum amount. You know, how would that really play out? So, yeah, I would say we'll just assume that, yeah, it's like a I mean, we're doing a bracket like they all show up to be a part of the tournament. And, uh, yeah, I'd say handle it that way. OK, I mean, I, if you guys agree, I think in a normal setting, not to make it a big conversation. Right. If those two characters are out somewhere and they they, they wind up fighting. Yeah, I don't think. With Iron Man's normal armor, no, I don't no. think that he would defeat Wonder Woman. There's no way. 
I mean, I yeah. think you maybe give her a run for her money a little bit, but I think with all her ability and all that, I don't think that he would be able to defeat her in a normal, you know, yeah. battle. I agree. I, I agree. agree. Totally. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, just one right, for so, one base, basic abilities. Yeah, like he, he doesn't stand a chance. Yeah. Okay, so we're so there, there, we're now on the island where the, the tournament starts. This is the first matchup. Iron Man and Wonder Woman. Okay. Right. So what now, would he what would he do differently? What would he do? What would he prepare for for Wonder Woman ahead of time? What would beyond his normal armor? What are some things that he could do that would give him at least more of a chance? Well, the armor's got to be the armor's got to be uh, stronger, I think. Right. So yes. I think you mentioned to us uh, off camera, uh, which I didn't know, was that in one of the comics. Odin had had uh, uh, made armor for him, or made the metal, or something like that. That made yeah, it there was a unique. Yes, there was a unique metal. Let me get my. Uh, let's see. There was a destroyer type armor made for Asgardian. There was a there was a there was a there was a, 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 a character in Thor called the Destroyer, and he was a he was basically a robotic character, had very tough armor. So apparently, in one of the comic stories, Odin helped. Iron Man make armor similar to that, so it's a it's you know it's a godlike armor, right? Okay. So he's gonna have to start. A, that'd be a place to start, right? So he would have to have a stronger armor because he's fighting somebody who's a demigod who packs a good punch, <laughs> literally. And she can also channel lightning through her bracelets and everything else. So he would definitely need the extra protection, for sure. Some sort of a backup power wise, because if, you know if he, because a lot of the suit is also electric, right? Yeah. So if she's got the power of lightning or electricity or whatever you want to call it, you're shorting that suit out and then he's shutting down. Right. Right. Do we need to prepare for that? Go ahead, Nick. And you say there was something about a, a sensitivity with uh, light or something like that with Wonder Woman. Was there some sort of? Uh... Well, she's just a she's just a, a you know mortal in that respect. So, I mean, she, you, you you've seen her. I mean, she she's you know she doesn't have yeah. her her eyes are not protected. You know, could he? He blind her in some way or something? Right. And take advantage of that. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And she does have a you know certainly above average uh, agility. Yeah, you know, she can block bullets and all that. But you know, heck, we've seen uh, you know the. Uh, uh, war machine armor that, mm. that Rhodey wears, and he's got machine guns and things like that. I mean, certainly Iron Man ahead of time can create armor that has is able to shoot a lot of projectiles. Could he potentially try to overwhelm her with a lot of projectiles? And does he get lucky and get a couple of shots in there and at least? you know, wound her or something like that, you know, is there any chance that he has that? Go ahead, Dean, I'm going to say something. Oh, no, 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 I, I just, um, the projectile thing, I just was was trying to imagine what projectiles is come, uh, Tony Stark's going to, 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 to put at her, and yeah, I think we all know where that <laughs> I just saw you smiling, I, and I'm like, I know he, it's not, you don't have to throw to him, it's not something he probably should say, know, wants right. to say. he just, I know what he's thinking, so yeah. Just thinking, Dick, just well, <laughs> Now, that's something that, you know, we talked about that a little bit off camera as well. I mean, we know that, you know, Tony Stark, at least for a while in the comics, he, you know, he... He was a womanizer, right? Affinity yeah. for the womanizer, right? Boy, so, boy. yeah. I mean, would, so I think the first play in, the, in, the, in, the, in this battle is she throws that lasso of truth around him, and he ends up admitting that he gave uh, Miss Potts uh, uh, an STD. <laughs> As well, as I, possible. I would say that's I'm not sure how relevant to the comics that was that was. But in the Batman uh, versus Superman, that's kind of how she's introduced as her and Bruce kind of have this cat and mouse kind of thing where they see each other sure. with the benefit. And they're kind of what's she up to? They obviously, you know, are, there's some level of interest in one another. Um, but, yeah, I mean, that's that's definitely something. Well, to take you know. Account. Yeah, so could Tony Stark go all out? Could he? Again, it's it's not a sexist thing, but it does come into play a little bit, yeah, right? Sure. So you find someone attractive. She's not you a find weak... someone attractive. That is kind yeah, of I mean, could, one of his powers, because, is like a womanizer. I, I mean, yeah, without being sexist, it, it 
Tony Stark is going to use that. He's going to use everything at his disposal. And if he can try to seduce her the night before, he's going right. to try to use it. Yeah. I mean, am I wrong? I mean, that, as the character that you saw in the, in the, in the TV shows and the comics, he would do something like that. So, I mean, if we're looking at all of it, his there's down no way. That. Listen, there's no way Diana's too smart. No, I'm just going to say, say. There's, no way, there's no way that that would happen prior to the battle. I'm talking about could he go all out? And again, she is one of the strongest characters. Forget the fact that she's a woman. She's one of the strongest characters in all of the comics. I'm just saying, would he view her as I'm, you know, I'm fighting a woman? Would he be able to go all out and do whatever he had to do to try to win yeah. at all costs, or would that be a hindrance for not all, not not for all characters? No way. You know, someone like you know Hulk or whatever. He's not gonna Hulk's not gonna, gonna see. He's just angry. He, I don't care what's in front of him. He's going to go after you at, at, in full force. Will man be able to do that? Is that even a factor? Or is that a waste of our breath to even talk about that? I So, there again, it kind of depends on the scenario. If this is at random, uh, you know, and he doesn't have time to prepare for something like that, his mindset might be he might have that moment of, I know I'm battling this woman, but that might come into play to where, like, you know, at the end of the day, these are all heroes with all – Technically speaking, you know, they, they have some level of morality, but so he, they might have it's, it's be merciful in a situation. But at the same time, if he has plenty, that's what this is all about, is being the one that wins. And then, like you, you guys said, it doesn't have to be the, to the death or anything like right. that. So just to, just to win, yeah, I think he could. And especially if he yeah. knows that that's what he's preparing for, he's going into that with the mentality of, I have to defeat her. So, yeah, if I can use a little emotional play or something like that yeah. to best her in certain ways, I will. But... Um, yeah, I think I think he would just probably do whatever it took to to prop to win. Okay, so that, that's okay. We'll forget we'll, we'll forget that part of the, the the factor then. So yeah, that's we're, we're we're saying here that all that crap doesn't matter. It's just she's too smart. He's gonna go all out, whatever it is. So forget. Yeah. So strictly on their intellect, abilities, and their arsenal, is there anything that Iron Man could do that he could build? Or do that would give him at the end of the, at the end of a battle, and again one woman would have all of her uh, uh, arsenal at her disposal as well, I mean, her sword, her shield, yeah. everything yeah. else, and, and then you know a new a new thing that came into play in the comics is that her bracelets they're actually they hold back some greater power uh, to where if they're so it does hold her back. So how powerful she actually is is kind of unknown. Is kind of an unknown, right? So, you know, I'm if push came to shove and she had to take those off, I don't know if she can take them off. Honestly, would that would that create a whole new level? But let's assume that can't happen. But I mean, it could be ahead. like a finish. It'd be like a finishing move. You know, finish him, and she snaps him off and just rips his head off, put them back mm -hmm. on. She's back to normal. Yeah, rips rips out his spine out of his spine, uh, yes. armor. That'd be kind of <laughs> neat, wouldn't it? Yeah. yeah. I'm so All right. So if let's... there's Go ahead. If there's a um, scenario where she, let's say he, he constructs armor that is uh, immune to her powers, right? To her blasts or whatever. Okay. He has yeah. Wonder Woman resistant armor. Yeah. Would that in theory, because she, so we talked a little bit off air too about like uh, theoretically, if she, you know, with the lasso of truth or whatever, if she were to wrap that around him. And perhaps be able to uh, get him to divulge the information of how to disable his technology, his armor. But if he has Wonder Woman like resistant, does that include the lasso? I mean, obviously this is all fictional people and powers and scenarios, but that's something that comes into play. Like who really gets the edge? It's hard to figure out what things are possible. I guess it's a, it's a comic book, so anything is possible. Right. right. But. Um, yeah, and yeah, that's a good one. And actually, uh, one of our one of our fans, uh, Matt, I used to work with, put that okay. in a comment. That very same thought. So it is very interesting. That's where yeah, I got it. Just... I don't want to take credit for that. Matt said I was going to say no, we, no. we talked about it because somebody commented. So it was Matt. I didn't uh, come up with that. Sure, okay. such a... <laughs> I wish Matt was here to tell me to put twenty four superheroes in instead of twenty. Stop I mean, my shit. <laughs> <laughs> okay, 
you know, it'd be a fun thing. You know, when we go ahead and, and we go around uh, three of us and we announce who we think, you know, wins this matchup. Also, if you want, why don't you put in a, how do you, how does it end? Like, what, what is that final, you know, what is the, who you're saying is the winner? How would yeah. they finally, you know, they battle back and forth. You describe kind of the ending of the fight. Right. Yeah. I, uh, you have a thought, Nick? I was just going to say, I guess until, because obviously they're not going to the death. So it's just where I, in my mind, where one wins is where they just render the other one no longer. There's no more tricks in the bag, so to speak. Yeah, they're going to yield. Just, you're out. Like you, right. you someone's going to yield. Someone's going to someone's going to yield and say, I, I give, or the other one's going to stop. You know, and yeah. realize they've won. Yeah, I mean, you, you you just you know that you have no other avenue. Like it, if it's Wonder Woman and you know she's he's Iron Man's thrown everything he has at her. He's prepared the best he can. He's tried every psychological trick in the book, and he's got his armor and. She's found a way around that. At a certain point, you as a mortal man with just a lot of money and brains just go, you know when you've lost, when you've been defeated, and when it's just that, not feasible. That exact point is is why I brought that up, because I had a scenario already in my head on how this fight ends. Yeah. So that's exactly, that's exactly how this ends for me. Is that how you, in that, like in that situation? With, right. And with her ultimately coming out? It. I mean, can we go ahead and, and uh, uh, say who, who's winning? I mean... Yeah, I, I, yeah, the, yes, I, I think so. We're coming up on uh, 25 minutes here. I think it's good to go ahead. Go ahead. Okay, yeah. So my the way it ends for me is that you have, and this is very simple, she, after they've been punching and kicking and, and, and brawling back and forth, she hits the electricity, shuts his suit down, and literally he is now a paperweight. He has to now get out of the suit and go, yeah, I, I, I'm now human. You're just going to literally knock my head off so he yields because she shuts the suit down he can't so she is merciful because she is she is the you know the more moral one of the two so she's she, a princess yeah exactly so she just shuts him down she doesn't have to yeah. break his arms or she just shuts him down and yeah. realize yep that's it so yep. that's how that ends for me with um diane going to the next round nick what do you think I uh, I agree. My scenario kind of plays out differently. It's kind of what I what I uh, painted there um, in, in my previous statement of just kind of in my head. Sure, he's he comes in, he's prepared to battle her, and he's come up with some pretty cool tricks. Uh, but at the end of the day, in my head, just based off of raw ability, if his toys go away, he's kind of screwed. He's just a regular dude. But she is. Yeah, does she have weaknesses and vulnerabilities? Absolutely. But I think at the end of the day, there, you know, you're not going to all you can do really to her is defend what she has. You can't right. take it away. So I think that gives her the edge. And I, I do have a live watcher here and he knows a lot about superheroes. So I would just like to ask him real quick if he agrees that would you do we have Wonder Woman or Iron Man? Who do you think would win? Oh, apparently I'm not. Uh... OK, Wonder Woman is good. So, Brian, what do you think? Yeah, I think that, you know, it... I, I'm 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 with you guys. I mean, I think that Tony Stark, with time to prepare, would prepare some type of armor, and I think he would hurt Wonder Woman for sure. Sure, he would do something to where something would get through. He would do some type of mass projectile thing or something like that to where, you know, he would get something through, and she would get hurt. But she is a a, a demigod. Yeah. And I don't know that I don't know that Iron Man is able to a mortal man is able to create uh, technology that can match godlike powers. I think he can, he'll last a while. Uh, but I think at the end of the day, even if they simply keep fighting for a long period of time, She's got, you know, the the endurance. She's again, she's a demigod. She can she can last a long time. Eventually, yeah, the, he would be in trouble with the the armor running out of power, or whatever it is. And you're right, she's got the the lightning abilities and so forth. And you know, she could do something there to short him out or something to that effect. So I think that at the end of the day, you're talking about a demigod versus a mortal man, and it's just not enough he could do enough to 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 win that battle ultimately so i agree with you guys so i think we're all so it's unanimous you know yeah. agree that even with the, even with the preparation there's not enough that iron man can do no. to defeat wonder woman in battle 
So we have our first winner, Wonder Woman, advancing to the next round, whoever that may be. Now, Nick, do you have uh, the next battle? You, you mentioned that earlier. Who's the next week? I do. Uh, coming up next in our bracket, I would have uh, we have Flash and Captain Marvel going head to head. So the Very winner good. of that would uh, take on uh, Wonder Woman to see. Uh, I mean, we would go through the whole list, so they wouldn't actually meet till we're done with the first round of everybody. But that's who we would have going on next. Yep. And that's Captain Marvel of the Marvel Universe, right? Not Shazam. That's Captain Marvel. Right. Of the that Marvel is Captain Universe. Marvel. Yes, Captain Marvel. Okay. All right. Very good. I think yep. this. I think I know the answer to this one already, but we'll talk about that next week. Uh, now, just off camera, just for fun. Now we talked about these characters you know definitely two iron man and wonder woman two iconic characters they've been in uh tv shows they've been in cartoons they've been in movies certainly so from iron man like you know, i think this is probably very easy is there anybody in the world that you picture other than robert Downey jr as iron man is there any any other depiction that's even close no now I'm I'm not a big I mean I I know of these characters and stuff but before the Iron Man movies came out I don't recall Iron Man being anywhere nearly as popular as he was so no. I didn't know much about the character I knew what his armor looked like and stuff but I didn't know but yeah so it's yeah it's only Robert Downey Jr. and no one else has really ever portrayed him to my knowledge or you know anything like that so I mean in the in the comics the way they drew it the because the whole suit's metal right I mean yeah but the, the armor had muscles, you know what I mean? It had, right. defined, you know, muscle tone and, and stuff. I always found right. that. Weird. You broke up there. What'd you say? You what now? The armor I just, had tone. I found it weird uh, that the muscle, that the suit itself had, like the metal was supposed to have muscles uh, yeah. and stuff. It feels when, like extra labor to like do the curvatures right. and the, like, just make it like, like it drawing more work for yourself. Back abs on it. Yeah, that's aesthetically pleasing, I guess. Well, okay, so we just talked about, you know, the womanizer and the playboy that he can be. I mean, surely, you know, maybe that that egotistical side comes out where you're like, yeah, I'm going to look pretty ripped in my, in my right. Iron Man costume. You know, I want, I want abs. But, I mean, look at the movie, though. In the movie, they kind I mean, as the movies went on, those suits kind of started to yeah. look a little more muscular. Excuse me, muscular and 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 the abs part did kind of resemble abs. I mean, the longer they got, the yeah, the, I mean, the suit evolved too. Yeah. So I I guess it got close to what the comic was. Yeah. I mean, would you build an armor to match your body, or would you put some muscles into it? I mean, what would you do? I want to look like Dean. <laughs> <laughs> now my my suit's gonna be actually just a big metal trash bag. Um, since I already look like a trash bag filled with oatmeal, yeah. you know. And then you yep. can just sleep in it, and it's like you don't even have to like you just fall asleep and pass out wherever you are. <laughs> All right, so we talk. So Robert Downey Jr. You're right. That 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 first Iron Man movie, that was the launch of the entire Marvel. You know, you know we had the Spider Man movies prior, which were very good. The Sam Raimi Spider Man movies were were rock solid. Those were great. Uh, are you but that, for, that's that that the Tobey Maguire ones? Yes. Okay. Well, not yes, not yes. the third one, but the first two were very good. Right. Yeah. Very, very good. But that that whole John Favreau and and Robert Downey Jr., that combination was that was the launch of of all the if that movie would have tanked. Think about that. Yeah. We would. Would we have seen the, the what, what we have seen so far? Nope. So that was just everything. Perfect storm in that movie happening. And I, I'm with you. I cannot picture anybody but Robert Downey Jr. playing that character. So I don't know what they'll do in the future, even if they'll. You know, maybe they have Rhodey or whatever. Anyhow, so we talk about this. But Wonder Woman, though, Wonder there Woman has been around in TV and all that a lot longer. So, mm -hmm. that, well, they did have Iron Man you know, cartoons in the 60s and all that stuff. But it, it was never at the level of even the Justice League on uh, Saturday morning cartoons and all that stuff. So who do you picture when you think of Wonder Woman? Who do you picture as Wonder Woman? A cartoon, an actress. Who do you picture? I mean, for me, I I, I cannot watch uh, Gail Gadot uh, portraying Wonder Woman and from now on see not see her. Yeah, Linda Carter was um, iconic, 
but she also it looked like it was from the 70s the the outfit looked like it was casted from the a 1970s wardrobe you know what i mean i mean just the from the from the outfit to you know her looks i mean yes uh you know linda carter's a handsome woman yes yes <laughs> <laughs> yeah she's she's very attractive yeah. especially in the 70s you know you know looked advanced but gail gadot is stunning you know uh so yeah to me it's gail gadot obviously the no, model is gonna pick no, dollar no. like i that's that's you know that's who i think of i'm sorry but gail or gall or i think it's i thought it was uh gall uh Gal, Gal Gadot. Gal, Gal Gadot. Gal Gadot. Yes. Gal Gadot. Yeah. Gal Gadot. So, yeah. Right. It was a Gadot. Yeah. Gadot. Gadot. Yeah. Gadot. So okay. I was pronouncing like an asshole the whole time, and you guys just let it happen. All right. That's I had one name right. Okay. But yeah, <laughs> I, I obviously, uh, you know, being younger and like being more familiar with the character now, I'm, I'm very aware of uh, Linda Carter. My dad had a massive crush on her when he was a kid. I think he got to meet her at a car show. I don't know if he passed out upon meeting her or not, or if that was huh? that's just an time. exaggeration or whatever. But I know that he he was very in love with her. Uh, as a kid, so yes. um, but yeah, she's she's very pretty, um, and I think of her as I, I guess I didn't grow up watching that though, um, so yeah, it, it's definitely with these movies happening now, it's it's Gal for sure. Now that T, te- now again, that's before your time, so that was a that was a good show. I mean, the, mm-hmm. for some of those, you know, the Hulk was okay, Spider Man was horrible. <laughs> in the 70s the tv show and that's another episode that we'll do later we're going to watch some of these terrible superhero shows of the 70s and oh, talk about those but we were talking but, about that uh, sorry to interrupt Brian, but uh, i don't even know if nick was uh, involved in that conversation about uh in the future doing it like a uh, facebook live thing and, and the three of us you know when we all can socially get back together watching those really awful 70s shows <laughs> Facebook Live uh, watch party with it. Oh, yeah. I, mean, yeah, I think Captain America is horrible, horrible, horrible. Oh, but anyway, that'd but be good the Wonder that. Woman show no, the, was a good show. Yeah. I mean, she, and and it was very true to the comic at the time. So, yeah, in the end, it, Linda Carter, it, it, she looked like the Wonder Woman in the comics. I mean, she yeah. had the exact same suit. I mean, obviously she was very pretty and all this, but but the her alter ego, Diana Prince, in the show, was very intelligent woman, all this and that and the other. It it was decent, and, you know. The, it was a little, you know, it was weird with the you know the, the invisible jetness, but still, it was good. But but even back then, it was I, it was a a strong female hero character, very popular, and it was it was good. So. It, for me, being a little older, it will be hard. It's hard to not immediately, when I see those old pictures of Linda Carter as a Wonder Woman, it's like, ah, it just takes you back to that, you know, gives you some of the uh, the tingly feelings uh, as, uh, you know, yeah. <laughs> as, a, as a young person. It's like you're, like, you know, but. That's what Jessica Rabbit does to me when I think of Jessica Rabbit. I get the, all the feels coming back, yeah. Yeah. Well, what, what, like when we did Star Wars, you know, you, you kind of gravitate to what you kind of grew up with. Right. You know, like when you, you know, Brian, you know, when you say Star Wars, Brian, he thinks the, you know, the original trilogy or, you know, like my president, you know, he thinks Abraham Lincoln. Right. <laughs> yes. Very popular man back then. Yes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, but it got, but I agree with you that from a current state, Gal, I mean, she looks the part. I like her in that role. They definitely picked someone who looks the part acts the part and again i love the you know again we talked about this prior you especially you know having a daughter and everything else i think it's i love 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 the fact that they have a strong female superheroes and captain marvel 2 and all that yeah, it's sure. good it's it's needed it's good you could you know you don't have to be a strong man to be a strong hero and stuff like that so the messaging and everything else is great so i definitely definitely love her gal gadot in that role so I, yeah. i'm looking forward to the the Wonder Woman 1984 and uh, and all of that as well. So I think Gal Gadot is so believable as Wonder Woman because she's so stunningly beautiful that it's almost yeah. not believable that she's a human woman. Like it's yeah. almost like another, you know what I mean? So I think that that and also on the Wonder Woman topic, I was just gonna say, if I could have an invisible vehicle, how cool would it be to have like an invisible crotch rocket where you're just in that position but no one sees anything and you're just zipping down the road? <laughs> that would be cool. That would be cool. Yeah. 
Yeah. All right. So uh, I, the, uh, ahead, I just want a, one of the rocking horses, invisible rocking horses. I think that'd be neat. Yeah. I mean, I'm not going anywhere. It's not really a vehicle, but I don't know. It's for you, and it's for those viewing you. It's That's right. It's enjoyable for everybody. That's right. Yeah. Just crouch down, you know. I like it. I would think you would prefer, prefer like a regular bicycle without the seat on it to be invisible <laughs> and, and have that at your... Uh... <laughs> <laughs> Look at this idiot. Right? He's, he's smiling like an idiot driving. What is he, what is he doing? I don't really can't tell. <laughs> You cut the hole out of those pants for some reason. <laughs> uh, it's, yeah, very strange. All right, so I think we've, we've wrapped this one up nicely. So, uh, again, we were unanimous. Wonder Woman would defeat Iron Man in a, in a tough battle. Just too much yep. for him. And then, uh, you know, some nice recap of the movies, you know, we, you know you, with, the, with uh, you know, current actors and all that. And, um, yeah, I don't know what else to say. Any, any closing remarks, uh, Dean? Um, no, I, I, I think the, I think the first round went well. I, you know, we were like, we'd all said, you know, it's all going to determine how this, uh, bracket's going to turn out based upon this first episode of this. And I think it went well. I think, uh, we all got our points across. I mean, I kind of knew going in, I mean, with, before the, uh, convincing, uh, each other who was going to win this one, but, um, just, I'm sure like all of you did, but yeah, I think it went well. Uh, and, uh, I'm looking forward to the, the next one. Yeah. Good, very good. So give us your commentary on our page at Convincing Idiots. You can also email us at uh, convincingidiots at gmail.com. We'll, we'll put this episode here. It'll be out on uh, podcast and video. So wherever you're watching, listening, listening to us now, we appreciate it. Um, and our next episode is going to be, again, uh, you know, rumor has it that uh, Nick has never seen the movie Airplane from 1980. So we're going to talk about that movie and then uh, watch it remotely. We're not going to record the whole thing watching it, but we're going to watch it and then go back and uh, share our, fi- our, fi- our, you know, our, our feelings about that movie and all that stuff. Did Nick, does Nick think it's really as funny as Dean and I think it is? You know, kind of more growing up with it, do we, it or does he think it's just completely uh, stupid? So, Nick, uh, anything else on uh, uh, Wonder Woman, uh, Iron Man, or anything on this uh, episode, sir? Um, no, not really. I think we, uh, I was curious to see if you guys would come to the same conclusion as I did, but I mean, yeah, we, we pretty much all got the same conclusion there and yeah, just check us out on, uh, Instagram at convincing underscore idiots. Um, and also on the Facebook page and, uh, the Gmail account and all that stuff. We'll, we'll throw all that out there. Um, but yeah, I'm looking forward to the next round. I think this went pretty well. So. Absolutely. Okay. Nick, you want to take us out here, sir? Yes, sir. Uh, so we've uh, it's been another good episode, boys. Uh, I am convinced um, that Wonder Woman was a, a worthy winner in this. And uh, please be sure to check us out on all the social media that I just mentioned. So signing off for Convincing Idiots, I am Nick, along with my live studio audience, Lane. And, and you guys? J- though, I, I, I would like to add my opinion on the battle oh, you, yeah we did wonder woman yes no, okay uh, i i'm, I'm actually signing voting. off for convincing idiots uh, okay, i'm okay, nick okay. i'm dean i'm brian i was just going to vote iron man we'll see you next time okay. peace see you guys <laughs>